Hello everyone, today we're going to be covering a periodic polling solution. I don't really know what to call this yet, uh, but effectively we've covered it before on the channel where you, uh, you know, you have like an update that happens on the server and then you use something like Turbo to broadcast that update either to the user themselves or to everyone else. And that is one way of handling things. Now, the other thing that you might sometimes have to do is uh, from the client, you might have to request an update. So you might do like a get request to the backend and say, hey, uh, is there anything new here? And sometimes, unfortunately, we end up in a situation where we need to like, you know, periodically check if there's an update. Now this is going to be a little bit of a contrived example. Uh, I just have like the view counters automatically updating here. Uh, of course, that's a uh, weird way to do things. But now we've got 10 things that are, you know, updating as things happen. So if I come over to like another tab where I have one of these posts open, it'll be post one. And I just start mashing the refresh button there to give it a bunch more views. We should see this start to tick up over time. Uh, you know, as this post gets more views. So it should be like 86 in like a couple seconds here. There we go. So it, it's not like the, it's not something you would want to do for a view solution. Cause I mean, first of all, it doesn't matter how many views it has. Like if you really care that much, just refresh the page. Uh, but the other part of it is you'll also see there is a placeholder that happens before the poll initially uh, goes off so we do have like that that content being loaded in over time so you don't have to worry about it like you know just breaking if it doesn't uh, have content initially and for this we are once again going to be referencing the stimulus components i've covered this a couple times on the channel now they have a whole bunch of useful stuff uh, and for this pulled updates it's i mean it's straight off of the uh the uh, content loader so there's other options here uh, for how you can use this, but the polling thing is something I've actually had to do before. So we're just going to be doing this real fast. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the server CD out of here, scroll in a bunch so we can actually read this. And then we're going to do a rails new video, go ahead and run that. And then I'll move this over to here. So I have my notes. So the uh, overall approach, pretty straightforward, just generate a scaffold, you know, set up the, the view increment logic. Uh, and then create like a small little stimulus controller. So let's CD into our video. Uh, for the scaffold, we can do a Rails G scaffold for a post, give each post a title and a body of type text. Let me hit F11 here so you can actually see this. And then we need a views of type integer. We'll just go ahead and do that. The next thing we want to do is that stimulus controller. Let's go ahead and let's do a Rails G stimulus. Uh, and I think I called it the poll controller. And then the last thing we have to do is the uh, import. So that is a yarn import in here, but we aren't using yarn here because we didn't use that uh, ES build command. So what we can do instead is a bin slash import map pin, and then we'll just pin this. This would of course just be yarn add and then this command as well uh, if you had ES build in enabled on your server. Okay, so that takes care of that. Next, we have to uh, open this up in VS Code. Go ahead and do that real fast and wait for VS Code to open. There we go. We can then close the welcome page, come into the app, the config, and the routes.rb. Inside of the routes real fast, we just wanna set up the route as well as that uh, route we're gonna be using for that view counter. So here we have the route set to the post index and then we have the route we're gonna be periodically polling. So in this case, it's just a get request to some uh, route that takes a ID. So it's like post slash one slash view count to get the view count for a specific post. Takes us to the post controller view count action. And then we give it the uh, as view underscore count. So we can do something like um, uh, view underscore count underscore path. Again, it doesn't really follow the post naming convention. Uh, but I haven't slept, it's 7 a.m. Uh, so you can imagine how well my brain is working right now. So, you know, feel free to, to rename this to whatever matches the post uh, naming convention. We're gonna come over to the post controller now. And in here, we just wanna do something like at post.increment for the show page. And we just wanna increment the views. So that'll take care of actually, uh, you know, the, the logic to increment them. 
Now uh, we're going to have to seed the database. So let's come into DB seeds. And for this, I'll just copy it because nobody cares. Uh, we'll just say oh, up to 10 times, do a post.create with a title of post I, a body of body I, and a views of random, uh, you know, like zero to 100 or whatever. So that'll give us a set number of views. So we have something to look at that's a little bit interesting. Let's go ahead and let's do a Rails DB colon migrate. Uh, and now I'm realizing I'm also gonna have to do a DB seed. So there we go, that seeds it. And now let's do a Rails S to start our server. Come over here and refresh on localhost port 3000. Uh, and we're getting a infinite render here. For some reason, I've had this issue before, but Brave just decides that it's gonna cache the page no matter what you try. There we go. Okay, so now it's actually loading the, the proper page uh, and we can take a look at this. We're gonna come into our app, our views, our posts, and uh, I did it in the show page, or no, I did it in the post partial. So in the post partial, this is where we hook up our controller. If we take a look at the stimulus content loader, uh, we can set up the HTML first. So for the HTML, there's a couple different options here. Oops, a couple different options here uh, where it shows you how to do stuff with just a, uh, you know, basic loading. Uh, and then there is the reloading, which is what we're using for the uh, pulled inter interval. So this is going to have like a refresh interval that you can tweak, uh, as well as the path that you need to hit. So we're going to go ahead and grab that. We'll replace these views here with this uh, information. Uh, but then we need to change this. So this is going to be the poll. Oops, the poll controller. This is going to be that path we set up in our routes, which is the view count path, right? I don't know what just happened. My screen just went black. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to come in here and replace this with a view count path. I'm really enjoying this latest NVIDIA update. Super panicking every time I try and do something. Uh, okay, so that takes care of that. Now we can tweak the interval if we'd like, uh, but for now I think this is fine. If we do this and we come over here and we refresh, we will see that nothing's happening here. So the first thing we need to know is that no route matches this uh, action view count uh, missing keys uh, ID. So that means that in our route, we were passing in the post as a argument, right? So we need this ID. So let's go ahead and let's do that. Of course, this is uh, pretty standard stuff if you've done this before, but I try to show these errors so people, you know, uh, that haven't run into them before know what they look like. So now we're going to have this and we're going to have the, uh, this content will be reloaded, but that's, you know, a complete lie. It's not going to be reloaded because we haven't set up that stimulus controller yet. So let's come over to app. Uh, JavaScript controllers and the poll controller. We can then come over to the stimulus controller or the stimulus page. And if we scroll down, they show us how to extend this controller, uh, which means we just grab all of this and paste in the new code. We no longer need to import that hotwired stimulus because we have this content loader, which is probably uh, also extending that hotwired stimulus uh, controller class. And then instead, now we just extend this content loader. We call uh, super.connect inside of our connect method, just like we usually do, and we're good to go. If you wanna override any other methods, you're free to do so. Just always remember if you override another method, maybe there's like a load method in the parent, make sure that you are calling that uh, super, oops, super.connect or super.load, whatever the method is. Uh, to ensure that you're doing whatever the parent logic is. So that super is its parent. We're do saying like parent, do your thing, which corresponds to this method. So that we still have that intended behavior. Now in my case, I don't need this. I just need the connect method. That's fine. And we're good to go here. So that takes care of that. Now, if we come over here and we refresh, uh, oops, if we hit enter here, we should hopefully see in our console somewhere that we have an abstract action not found, view count could not be found for post controller. So now we have to actually define this action. So if we come up into our post controller, what defining the action means, of course, is we have to do a def, view count, and then in here we have to find some way to, uh, you know, display this on the page. So the first step is to set the post for this, which we can do up here. We can just say, add the view count in here. And now it will call set post for view count. And if we scroll down, set post is this at post equals post.find. So now we have at post available for us inside of view count. Now that we have that, we can say uh, render a partial. 
This will be for a post slash, uh, sure, view count, why not? And then we can pass in some locals and in the locals we can just say, uh, here you go, here's a post. Uh, so post is equal to at post. So inside of our view count partial, we can now just use this post variable. So if we come over to our views, our posts, uh, inside of here, we need to right click new file and we need to name this the same thing we just did. So underscore view underscore count dot HTML dot ERB. And in here, this is the thing we're gonna render whenever we show this. So like right here, uh, we need this view count partial to be whatever we wanna see right here. So maybe we'll do like bold uh, view count colon and then the actual uh, number. So let's come into our uh, view count partial and what we can do is just say uh, strong view count colon. So that gives us our bold. And then we just do a post dot views, something like that, right? Now we come over to our post controller. We can save this, hopefully, uh, assuming VS Code wants to play. And now if I hit uh, enter and reload the page, we should hopefully see uh, that this gets updated. I just realized the issue here is we actually have to change this content loader. We changed the controller, but I forgot to change the content loader. So we'll go ahead and we'll do this. So now we have a data dash, whatever our controller is called, which is the poll controller. And then we keep the uh, variables here for our you know targets or whatever, or values, I guess is how they're doing it. Now, if we refresh, we should see this uh, start to update in real time. So let me go ahead and uh, I'll middle mouse but button click the show post. I'll move it over here and I'll just start mashing the refresh button and we should see this change. So there we go, we're up to 20. Uh, now we're up to 27 over here. And you can see the because this is in the partial itself, uh, we're also seeing this go uh, with that. It'll be reloaded in X amount of time. So we are getting that delay over here as well. So anywhere you, you render this partial will now have this hookup of course means if you render it in a bunch of places, you're gonna have a bunch of hits to uh, request how many views there are. This is something to take into consideration. But yeah, I just wanted to cover this because sometimes you do need to have like a, a front end uh, periodic refresh happening and you don't wanna set it up uh, maybe with, you know, your your turbo or whatever. So instead you just set up some basic stimulus and you're you're off to the races. I know, uh, you know, JavaScript usage is, is frowned upon, but uh, you know, so is uh, over engineering your solution so you can uh, avoid JavaScript. <laughs> Just don't tell, uh, don't tell some of the Rails devs I said that. But yeah, you know, if hopefully this is useful in some way. If it's not, you know, you're always free to just leave the video, downvote it. I don't care. Uh, but for the the five of you that uh, have a use for this, there you go. Now you know how to do it. Just go over to stimuluscomponents.com. Uh, they do have a donation page, so make sure you like sponsor them if you're you know getting uses out of this. Uh, and hopefully, I will see you in the next video.